All right, boys and girls. Um, so for English, this is for Thursday and Friday of the week of May 20th through the 24th. Um, we're moving on. We've still been talking about some abbreviations, but now we're going to look at some street names and states. Um, I told you a while back ago that in the back of your English book, there is a nice list of different abbreviations we can use. Calendar months, uh, days of the week, uh, titles that you can use to address people like doctor or reverend, uh, Mr., Mrs. Um, also, there is street names like road, avenue, street. Um, they too have abbreviations as well as the states. Who can tell me what the abbreviation for Florida is? All right, if you said FL, you're absolutely correct. Pat yourself on the back. That is the abbreviation for Florida. That list back on 280, I'm sorry, 384 and 385 also has all of the states, every single one of them listed on those pages. So again, that is page 384 and 385 to the back of your book. Don't lose that, all right? So let's uh, see what she's got to say about some abbreviations and street names as well as states. Let's start with abbreviations we might use in an address or an address. There's the word apartment in the middle and several abbreviations in an arch. Which abbreviation do you think is used for apartment? Did you say A, P, T, period? That is correct. And where do we get that abbreviation, the letters for that? From the A and the P and then the T. Okay, what about circle? Which is the abbreviation for circle? Did you say C, I, R, period? And see where those letters come from? They are the first three letters in the word circle. Drive is DR period from the first two letters of drive. Next we have street, and I think you know what the abbreviation is for that. ST period from the first two letters. Avenue is abbreviated AVE period, and that comes from the first three letters. I hope that you noticed that each abbreviation begins with a capital letter and ends with a period. And you may have noticed that many of these abbreviations came from the first few letters of the original word. Let's look at another group of abbreviations. Lane is abbreviated L-N, and that comes from the L and then the N, which is in the middle of the word. What about boulevard? That's a big word and it is abbreviated B-L-V-D period from the letters. They are spread all throughout that word. Road is R-D period from the first letter and the last letter. And then court is abbreviated C-T period from the first and last letter as well. Now, there's an abbreviation that doesn't follow the usual rules for abbreviations. Post office is written with two capital letters and no period. So post office is just a capital P and a capital O. They're both capitalized and there's no punctuation. Now, in a moment, We'll talk about the abbreviations for states, and you'll notice that they also don't use periods. Did you notice an abbreviation that we talked about in this lesson that's the same as an abbreviation of a person's title? How about doctor or DR? How do you know whether DR refers to a doctor or a drive in a sentence. Well, doctor would be used before a person's name, like Dr. Tompkins. Drive, the DR period meaning drive, would be used after a street name, the name of a street, like Madagascar Drive. 
let's look at some state abbreviations. Remember what is different about them than the ones we've already learned? State abbreviations have two capital letters and no periods. Look closely and see if you can find the abbreviation for Alabama. I see it. And how is the abbreviation made? It's A-L from the first two letters of the name Alabama. Do you see other state abbreviations formed from the first two letters of the state name? How about Arkansas comes from A-R. Illinois is made from I-L. Michigan is made from M-I. Now some state abbreviations are formed from the first letters of each word in the name. Do you live in a state that has two names? I do. I live in South Carolina. Right there. So our state abbreviation is the S for South and the C for Carolina. What is the abbreviation for South Dakota? You know that. That's easy. S D. What other abbreviations are formed this way from the state names that have two words? I see North Carolina, North Dakota. What about New Hampshire and New York? Yeah. All right. Some abbreviations are formed from the first letter and another important letter in the name, like look at Alaska. Its abbreviation is from the A and the K. Arizona is going to come from the A and the Z. Texas comes from the T and the X. And then other state abbreviations are formed from the first and last letter of the name, like Connecticut, Georgia, and Iowa. Now, we didn't talk about Florida, did we? When I showed you my grandpa's letter, he abbreviated it F, L, A, and then he put a period. Well, that's how Florida used to be abbreviated for writing letters when people sorted the mail by hand. But when the post office started using machines to sort the mail, they asked people to use just the two letter, no period abbreviations. I think it was easier for the machines to read the abbreviations that way when they didn't have punctuation and only had the two letters. Now let's look at an envelope and then I have some very special envelopes to show you. The name of the person who writes the letter goes in the upper left corner. So who wrote this letter? Did you say Gloria Smith? Yes, that's the upper, meaning up, left corner of the page. Now under her name is her address. So you see how we do that. She writes her name on the top line, address on the next line. What do you think 26 Highland Ave is? 26 is Gloria's house number and Highland Ave would be Highland Avenue. That is the name of her street. What do you think Grayson is? That is the name of the city where she lives. And I know that you know what AL stands for. That is Alabama, one of our southern states. After the state, there are some numbers. Did you remember seeing those? There's five digits. These numbers help the post office when they deliver the mail. These numbers are called zip code. Do you know what zip code stands for? It sounds like something that goes fast, doesn't it? It stands for Zone Improvement Plan, and it was created to help sort the mail more quickly. Now, in other countries, it's called things like Postal Code or Post Code. Ireland calls it 
Ercota, as best as I could tell, I looked up the pronunciation of that, and that's what it sounded like it was. Sometimes the instead of postal uh, zip code or postal code, it's called pin code. Now, actually, in other countries, they might write their address differently. So if you live outside of the United States, or if you're writing a letter to someone outside of the United States, you'll need someone to help you with the correct address format. I'm not gonna be able to cover that. I'm gonna talk about mailing letters in the United States. Now, the second address on our envelope is the person Gloria is sending the letter to. Let's look at that. Gloria's letter is going to Mr. Don K. Jones. Notice the abbreviation, MR period for Mr. And he uses his initial, so that's capital K followed by a period. Then of course, 23 Maple ST, means Maple Street, is where Mr. Jones receives his mail. Notice the abbreviation for street there. And then Tampa, Florida. Oh, there's our Florida abbreviation. Tampa, Florida is the city and state followed by the zip code. Now, before we go to our assignment, I want to show you some very old envelopes that my mom let me borrow. These are from 1916, so they are over 100 years old. I want you to look at the addresses with me and see if there's anything different than the way we write our envelopes today. All right, there's the name, Mr. Dale Pittman. No address, there's no address. There's the city, Adams, and then Nebraska is on the next line. Notice the abbreviation, N-E-B-R. This letter is the same way. This is to my great-grandma on my mother's side. This is Mary Pittman, and then Adams, Nebraska. Also, I thought this was interesting. That's a two-cent stamp. It only costs two cents to mail it. Now, for our first-class letters, it's between 50 and 55 cents. Here's a postcard one penny, but again, Adams, Nebraska is all they put on there and it got delivered to the right address. All right, let's look at our work text page for today. All right, page 151, you've got a sample envelope here and it says circle the six abbreviations in the addresses above. I'm going to go ahead and work that through with you all the way. So we have Mr. That's an abbreviation. Any street names? How about Drive? Tucson, Arizona. AC. And what do you see there? Mrs. Is that an abbreviation? We said that street was abbreviation and South Carolina was an abbreviation. So I went ahead and gave you those but you can find abbreviations in an envelope. Here you're going to write the abbreviation on the stamp. So here's your word, write the abbreviation there. You can look it up or you can try to remember it. Here, write the abbreviation of the underlined words in each address. So here you've got street, so you would write the abbreviation over there on those lines for whatever is underlined there. So pause the program and complete one through six on that page. All right, boys and girls. Um, so those are kind of the directions for page 151 and 152. 152 is a much similar. Um, the only thing I see differently is uh, number seven on page 152, which is due on Friday, I believe. Um, complete the envelope. You are the sender and your partner is the receiver. Um, you don't need a partner for this one, but I want you to address the envelope like it's coming from you, which means your information would go in the upper left hand corner. And then who you're sending it to, go ahead and pick somebody um, in maybe grandma, grandpa, they, I'm sure they love to get letters from you, even aunts or uncles. Um, so go ahead and pick somebody and go ahead and write somebody into that uh, address there. Please don't forget, use pages 384 and 385 of your English books towards the back there for a list of abbreviations. If you get stuck, try to remember it on your own, but if you get stuck, that is there for your help. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I uh, hope we can talk to you soon. All right. Have a great day.